what's up YouTube coming back at you with another quick and short video on some science I've been reading this is an informal discussion and I encourage you to leave your comments and feedback and questions and um, exciting debates in the comments section below um, this um, paper is something that I found really interesting. It's about meat eating and chimpanzees. And I think it's interesting for me coming from a background in experimenting with fruitarianism and really reading um, some, you know, papers about chimpanzee diets and kind of buying into the whole hype that, you know, as humans, we're frugivores and we really should be eating like our next of kin and etc. Et um, it's been seen and observed in chimpanzees before that they definitely uh, hunt and they definitely take in meat as part of their dietary regimen. However, in the past it's been shown or it's been suggested that this is a small portion of a chimpanzee diet. And this data has come from stool samples and from observational data. And both of these data types have problems with them. Uh, with stool samples, they can't tell a percentage. Uh, with observational data, they have no idea because it could be seasonal, it could be, um, you know, a sense of being observed might alter their behavior. So there's some problems with that. Uh, this particular research looked at stable isotopes of both hair and bone. And this gave them the opportunity to look at short-term and long-term dietary consumption as it accumulates in the bone marrow. And uh, they uh, took it from this group of chimps in the Ivory Coast in a wildlife preserve there. And uh, what they found, I think, was pretty interesting. Let's take a look. Okay, I had to do a little change up here in lighting and shooting area, but back to the science. So the first thing that they did, and I think this shows that um, they did comprehensive, well thought out research, is they took the isotopic values of the flora and fauna in the area and the region that the chimps regularly are known and observed to consume and they compared that to the chimps themselves. And this is very much a sort of you are what you eat scenario when they're using these isotopic values. Now, it's been observed that male chimps hunt and they are the predominant hunters and they hypothesize therefore that they're gonna show the highest uh, isotopic values for nitrogen which is indicative of um, insects and meat uh, and that is in fact what they found they did find significantly higher nitrogen isotopic values in the male chimpanzees over the females now some might argue that that does not necessarily mean that it is flesh meat eating however both females and males eat an extraordinary amount of termites and grubs and other insects in their diets. So any nitrogen value above females is indicative of a different and varied nitrogen source since the females are already eating a large portion of insects, same as males. Another layer to this that I thought was interesting, although not terribly surprising, is that the meat intake varied amongst the males. So the best males, as far as hunting was concerned, the most talented and gifted hunters, were often at the top tier of the social hierarchy. They were either alpha males or just under the alpha male. And the beta males were largely uninterested in hunting, probably because they were not gifted at it, or they were uh, feigning disinterest in meat and their nitrogen lowers values were much lower. However, they did really uh, observe some who would beg and um, try to cheat and steal. And those sort of manipulative 
uh, sub-alpha males had higher nitrogen values than those that feigned total disinterest. Um, they also noticed that the alpha males who procured the most meat also worked with the alpha females and those alpha females that they mated with more had higher nitrogen levels and again this comes back to what we see very often in natural ecosystems is what we call nuptial gifts where if you go out and you get a really rich dense nutrition source and you provide it for your mate, they're going to have more successful reproduction and they're, therefore you are, as a coupling team, going to have more successful mating. So to take this discussion a little bit further on this idea, the chimps clearly relish um, meat eating. It's a very nutritive source of nourishment to be a little bit redundant there, but they have a taste for it and they seek it out. It's not random scavenging. It's not random, oh, I think I'll eat this monkey. It has an intent and a purpose behind it and it dictates their social structure to a certain degree. Um, this idea of hunting and I'm sure that this was part of what helped us evolve as a society, as humans as well, requires coordination. It requires cooperation. It requires uh, better communication skills. It requires, in some cases, it's been recorded tool making. It requires um, social hierarchy. It requires uh, an assessment of trust between a hunting team or even between uh, interacting on a social hierarchy. Uh, so therefore, you know, teams are created and um, the whole thing that we see in humans, you can look at it, it parallels, whether it's business or, you know, whatever, any sort of uh, money scheme is going to have a very similar hierarchy because it's a commodity. So we start to see social structuring around commodity. Uh, we start to see vying for mating, uh, all of these things that make humans so complex and wonderful. We see the same thing here in a more rudimentary form. Um, I thought that it would be interesting to compare their nitrogen values to early humans. So if you remember this slide I brought up in a couple of vlogs ago, I was looking at the nitrogen isotope levels of you know, ancient humans, um, around the time of the crossover between Neanderthals, just before Neanderthal extinction. And uh, the humans and Neanderthals showed very high apex level nitrogen levels. And I thought it'd be interesting to look at the chimps versus that. And we really see the male chimps being around 8, just over 8. And that kind of puts them at the lower end range of Neanderthals, so probably on par with some less than successful Neanderthals, and uh, also kind of around the range of some smaller dog species. So that's pretty interesting. I think it shows that, you know, this idea of the pure frugivore who just relishes on fruits all day and picks at some insects once in a while when fruits aren't ripe or maybe works on some nuts in desperation really doesn't hold true and I think a lot of these faults lacking real data arguments that are getting tossed around on the internet are really uh, hugely misinformative and I think that they pull people in dangerous directions as far as experimenting with diets and I think that you know folks need to take a consideration about what's really going on before making willy-nilly ideas that they can just live on fruit and this is some information that I wish that I had had uh, early in the game five years ago six years ago and it might have um, tempered my decisions a bit let me know what you think Good or bad, hit thumbs up. We'll see you next time.